Okay, now you have Ultra Edit installed and you've gone through our welcome page, so you're, you're set and ready to start editing. And now we're going to walk through the application, uh, going to cover the user interface and the available commands and features. And we're going to start with the file menu. And this is, this is standard and, and something you should be familiar with, but I do want to highlight that we have a recently opened and a recently closed list. I find this useful because after I've opened a large number of files uh, and I accidentally close one, for instance, uh, the recently opened list may not include that file anymore any longer. I can just pop over the recently closed. It'll be at the top of the list. I can reopen the file. Uh, sadly, that happens more often than I would like to admit, but uh, I do find it quite useful to have that functionality. Also, like to highlight the revert to save. If you've made uh, multiple you know, edits to a file and you'd like to just get back to a, a clean state, uh, you can just revert to save, and I'll take you back to the last point you saved the file. Now we're going to move on to the home tab. In the home tab, uh, these are commonly used commands. You're, I'm sure you're familiar with the common clipboard commands, search commands, bookmarks. But I do want to uh, uh, bring up a couple items here. One is the clipboards. Ultraedit has a number of user clipboards. These allow you to store data. Uh, think of these like as a temporary cache that's separate from the Windows clipboard. So any data you put here is uh, safe and will not be overwritten by any other applications if you put uh, data on the Windows clipboard. So I could select uh, user clipboard 5. I could then select some text. Copy that text. It's now on the clipboard and I can paste it just like that. And it'll be saved there until I uh, close the application or overwrite that clipboard. <clears throat> uh, we also have uh, integrated applications on the uh, home tab. These are our, the other Ultra Edit suite applications, Ultra Compare, Ultra Finder, Ultra FTP. They integrate with Ultra Edit and it's nice to have them there that you can jump to them for that functionality. Now I'll move on to the Edit tab. In the Edit tab we have a set of commands that allow you to modify the content of your files, uh, whether you want to do various selections or deletions, uh, modifying lines, uh, column mode, and, and so forth. Uh, all a lot of useful commands, but I'm going to highlight a couple items here. If I, for instance, had some text and I wanted to combine those lines, I can just do a select and a join, and now those, those lines are combined. Just an easy convenience command. Also on our edit tab here, we have column mode. Column mode is one of our most popular features, and uh, we're going to get into column mode uh, in much more detail later on in the presentation. We've, we've got a segment just on the column mode. And now we're going to move on to our format tab. Format tab, as you would imagine, it controls uh, uh, formatting of text, whether that's uh, re-indenting or changing case, tabs to spaces, items like that. Just, for instance, if I had some text that I wanted to alter the case for, maybe this was intended to be uppercase because this is a data file, I can just select that hit that. Now it's all uppercase. Moving on to the View tab. This allows to change. This is presentation based. So generally these commands won't typically alter what you're seeing here, but uh, they, they will change the presentation. Like I can enable spaces, and tabs, line endings, and you'll see and now I can see that within my text file. And I find that convenient, especially if you're working with uh, data files where tabs or spaces matter. This allows you to see the difference and uh, making edits accordingly. So it's useful for that. Uh, we also have another here that I, that I often find useful. I'm going to switch over back to this. And we have a highlight all selected. This allows you to do a, a group selection on a single uh, string. For instance, I could select Ultra FTP, highlight all selected. Now, now all instances of that have been selected. And if I wanted to make an edit here of all of these simultaneously, I could set make these all selections. And then I could change it. Let's say I wanted this file. Maybe I wanted, maybe I was using this as a template and I wanted to go in and, 
and to replace ultra FTP with ultra edit, I could do that throughout the entire file with just a few keystrokes. Now I should mention that the ability to do a multiple selection and a multi-edit, that really gets into our multi caret feature that allows you to make multiple selections throughout a file and then execute editing commands on that. And we're actually going to have a uh, lengthier demo on that functionality later. And now let's go through what we have available in the coding tab. Uh, let's see, first up, add another language. This is for adding additional uh, syntax types for various syntax languages. Uh, we're going to do a demo on that later. It'll show uh, opening a file where syntax is not available, and then we'll go through the short process of, of adding support for that so you can get syntax highlighting in a file. So that, I felt that was worth mentioning. Uh, what else do we have? Ah, live preview. Live preview is also extremely useful. If you have a file like here's a markdown file, you can activate live preview and it will show you how your market, how your markup file would be rendered in a browser. Uh, <clears throat> we actually have, much like the add another language feature, uh, the live preview and markdown, we have a, a demo of that also taking place later in the presentation. So uh, you can get more information on that then. So we're going to look at what you can do with our search capability under the coding. And so if you had a, a file and you wanted to select perhaps a, a term or really anything, but for instance, if you wanted to get the details on the background color item for the HTML page, you could select background color, hit Google, and there you go that you could, you could for instance, go to the uh, W3 website and get access to that there. And now let's take a look at our project tab. Much like what it sounds like, you can create a project, uh, add files and folders to it, and manage those there. Uh, that really gets into uh, something that's that's frankly beyond the scope of what we're trying to introduce today. But I do want to make you aware that this exists and it's here. And that we, we could actually do a webinar entirely on the project capabilities, project management. And that might be a good topic for us to come back to. But I'm going to move on now to our Layout tab. Under Layout, uh, you have access to all the dockable windows and the features they provide to Ultra Edit. I'm going to single out... Uh, two of these right now. One is our function list, which uh, I've opened a C++ file and in the function list I have all of the functions listed in this uh, source code file are available here and I can use the function list to navigate to them including variables within these functions and it just gives you a nice way to uh, uh, move in your source code files and have a, a, a mapping of the, the code and the code structure that's in there. And I'm also going to look at our clipboard history. This can be useful, especially if you're working uh, with a, a lot of data and you're you know copying, pasting a lot of data. You've got a record of what you've been working on. And instead of having to backtrack to find uh, uh, data that you just work with, like for instance, I was working in this file and I made some changes there. Uh, I, I can just look back to the last uh, edits I've done with that and I can just, uh, uh, for instance, do a selection, double click the clipboard history and it will paste that information directly in there for me. So that's just a couple of the dockable windows that are available and you can see there is a large number of dock windows, each with different functionality. And much like with the project, we could do an entire webinar just on the dock windows and the functionality that they provide. So that may be something to look forward to. Okay, now I'm going to move on to our window tab. And uh, the window tab lets you control the, 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 the physical layout of the alternate window. Like for instance, uh, if I had a source code file and I was working in a relatively large source code file and I didn't want to scroll up or down to get back and forth to different sections of the code, I could split the window horizontally and then I could scroll down on this end and in the upper pane I could work in the top. 
so that I could enter definitions at the top of the source code file and then enter implementation into the bottom of the source code file and work in those sections at the same time without having to jump back and forth. That can be a, a, a real time saver if you're working with a large source code file. And moving on to our advanced tab. This is, uh, as it states, these are more advanced features, but uh, they are they're definitely something that, that once you're familiar with Ultradit, you can come back and look at, and uh, they can do significantly improve your, your uh, uh, productivity. Uh, we have a full suite of, of script capabilities, macro capabilities, uh, conversions, uh, working with tools, and of course the application settings, which uh, you've already seen those, seen that briefly. And uh, but uh, this is definitely something to come back to once you are ready to really dive into all of the capabilities of UltraEdit. But uh, there are some, there are many useful tools here. Just just as an example, um, if uh, you're looking on your you're looking for data on your file system and you've got directory and folders and you'd like to to have a better listing of that, you could do something simple like run a DOS command and uh, get the data from a particular directory listing and now you've got a list of all the files and folders that was in that directory and now you can work with that data as a text file and you can do similar things with this with other tool items here is uh, bringing information from outside UltraEdit into UltraEdit whether you're running a command running a script running a macro um, basically just expands the capabilities of the application Okay, well, we've worked our way through the entire ribbon. We're now going to move up to the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar right here at the top of the application gives you some commonly used commands that are often useful, like opening and uh, saving files, printing, undo, redo, but it's also customizable. So you could go in, there's some default, like for instance, search. I could enter something there, like if I'm looking for Ultra Edit. And then I could move through my source file from that search box. And that's convenient to have there. Uh, I could also go in and add a command, like something uh, we're going to look at in more detail, like the live preview. I could add the live preview to my quick bar. And now that I've got that as part of my quick bar, I can toggle the live preview from there. I don't have to have the ribbon or issue another command. I can just quickly toggle the live preview from that quick access to work. Just another way of making commands more accessible to the user. And moving on from the quick access toolbar, we're going to jump down to our status bar. Our status bar gives you information that can really help you when you're editing. Like here we have, uh, this is giving you your carrot position. It gives you your line and column position. It also tells you which clipboard is currently active. We covered that earlier, that you have a Windows clipboard and then you have multiple Ultra Edit clipboards. This way you can just glance down and say, did, did I change my clipboard? What data do I expect to have in that clipboard? And this will let you know what that is. Uh, it will also tell you your, your, your current line terminator type, whether it's you know, a, a DOS or Unix line terminator type. Tell you the encoding of your file, which n normally you're not going to have to deal with that. But if you deal with uh, uh, non-Unicode files with different encodings, you may, like for instance, I have a uh, Chinese file here, and it's, it's showing up as a simplified Chinese file. But uh, I might not actually think this is a simplified Chinese. Maybe it is instead a traditional Chinese file. I can just go to that drop down, change it, and you'll see that that's changed. This doesn't change the actual file, it just changes the presentation of the file. So anytime you think that you have a file where the encoding is incorrect and you'd like to see a different encoding for that file, you can just change it and it'll change the view and maybe that'll uh, help with, with uh, working with that file. And also we have uh, where you can select the uh, syntax type in the status bar for a file. Like for instance, I can create a new file and I could paste some content in that new file and you can see that it's being highlighted as C++ content but this is actually markdown content so I can just go to here and change that to markdown and now you can see that it's highlighted correctly as markdown 
So the status bar gives you just access to some to some viewing changes in your file that uh, just make it easy. Again, much like the quick access toolbar at the top, the status bar at the bottom gives you quick, easy access to uh, certain commands and features. Okay, and now that we have completed the status bar, I'm going to bring up the command palette, and then I'm going to hand this off to Ben, and he is going to do a presentation on the command palette.